بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سورة العلق It's a Meccan surah According to the consensus of scholars They all said it's Meccan Okay uh, The first five verses of Surah Al-Alaq Are the first verses to be revealed on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, it has two names, either Surah Iqra, which means read or recite, or Surah Al-Alaq. Al-Alaq is a suspended or a clinging, a clinging uh, substance or object. Now, the reason of revelation, if you remember in the very beginning of uh, the classes of Tafsir, we said some surahs have a reason why they, in, the entire surah was revealed. While other surahs have certain verses in it that had reasons for revelation, while the rest of it uh, did not have a reason. In this surah, uh, two verses were revealed for a reason. فَلْيَدْعُوا نَادِيَ سَنَدْعُوا الزَّبَانِيَ Which means, let him call his supporters, we will call our angels. Now, uh, this is reported by Imam Muslim uh, in his Sahih that Abu Jahl uh, passed by the Prophet وسلم, and this is uh, narrated by Ibn Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu an Abi. He said Abu Jahl passed by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whilst he was praying. So if you if you uh, Recollect in the beginning of the, the mission of the Prophet ﷺ, everything was in secret, and then the command came to make it public and pray in public. And so after that, when it became public, the Prophet ﷺ used to pray, and he used to pray in Mecca next to the Kaaba and all that. So one time, uh, Abu Jahl was passing by, and he saw the Prophet ﷺ praying, and he said to him, "Did I not forbid you from doing this?" So the Prophet ﷺ concluded his salah, was angry, and aggressively rebuked him, and spoke very harshly to Abu Jahl, to the extent that Abu Jahl said, O oh Muhammad, what are you threatening me with? By Allah, you know, there is none in Mecca who has more supporters than myself. So Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the verse, let him call his supporters, we'll call our angels. Ibn Abbas said, by Allah, if he, had, if he would have called his supporters, the angels would have snatched them out of the face of earth. Now, this is the reason of revelation. Now, this surah, surat uh, Iqra, is addressing the greatest event that happened to humanity. It is the greatest in its essence and its implications and impact on humanity. It is talking about commissioning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the initiating point of his da'wah. The story is reported by uh, Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim and uh, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. She said in the very beginning, revelations used to come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the form of true dreams he would see in, uh, in his sleep. And whenever he saw a dream, it would come true, just like bright light day, she said. And then he, she said, uh, staying in seclusion became endeared to his heart. He became inclined to be alone, to seclude himself from people. So he used to go to uh, the cave Hira. And uh, for those who've never been to Mecca, have never seen the cave, reach in that cave is mission impossible. It is extremely difficult 
and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to go and sit there ponder and think he was upon monotheism sallallahu alayhi wasallam he did not he rejected and refused what his people were upon so he used to sit alone take food and drinks and drink and sit alone in the cave for whatever number of days or nights as as she said ma sha allah lah whatever allah willed for him and then he would go back to khadija radiyallahu anha his wife and get more provisions and return until she said until the truth came to him whilst he was in hira the angel came to him and then he said iqra recite the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i am not one who recites you know that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a learned he didn't know how to read nor write he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he squeezed me so hard to an extent that i could not bear and then he released me and he said iqra again the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i am not one who re- who recites i don't know how to recite again he squeezed him hard to the point he said that i could not bear and then released me and said again iqra the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ma ana biqari i am not one who recites so he alayhi salam jibril after the third one said iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al insana min alaq iqra wa rabbuka al akram alladhi 'allama bil qalam 'allama al insana ma lam ya'lam so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam became terrified and rushed back to khadija and informed her and he said i don't know what happened to me i feared for my life i feared for myself cover me cover zammiluni zammiluni cover me so she covered him alayhi salatu wassalam and then he told her the story and that he was afraid i mean imagine yourself at the top of a mountain in a cave dark right and then someone like jibril comes and squeezes you to the point that you feel that you're going to be losing your soul your soul is going to depart what is the extent of fear he felt alayhi salatu wassalam as a result of this he went shivering said zammiluni and then he told her the story and look at the this stance of our mother khadija radiyallahu anha and this is a message to all wives and mothers whether they're wives of those who are striving to call people to allah or mothers of those who work for the deen of allah azza wa jalla she said no be of good cheer by allah allah will never disgrace you immediately motivating him energizing him putting hope in his heart sallallahu alaihi wasallam that allah will not forsake him nor disgrace him why she said because you maintain ties with kinship you speak the truth now in in this here is a message that such good deeds for us the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam can be a savior during times of hardship and that's why in the famous story of the three who were captured in a cave when the big rock rolled and blocked the entrance how did they come out of this cave they said let's supplicate allah azza wa jal 
by virtue of good deeds that we've done sincerely for him and they did. Right? So she said, no, by Allah, by Allah, I swear by Allah, Allah will not disgrace you. Number one, you maintain ties with kinship. Number two, you speak the truth. Number, uh, number three, you're generous and hospitable to your guests. Number four, you help and assist the needy and uh, destitute. And uh, you give a hand of help to uh, those who are stricken by calamity. So he relaxed, alayhi salatu wasalam. And then she took him and, to, and she went to her uh, paternal uh, cousin, Waraqa ibn Nawfan. Uh, and he was a man who became Christian during the time of Jahiliya. And he used to write uh, the gospel in, in, uh, in Arabic. And he was a, a very old man and became blind uh, at his old age. Uh, so she went to him and said, Oh cousin, listen to what he has to say. So he said, Son, what did you see? So the Prophet ﷺ informed Waraqa uh, of what happened and he immediately said, Hada huwa namusu alladhi unzila ila Musa aw ala Musa. This is the angel who was sent down or came to Musa alayhi salam. And then he told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam something which was a preparation for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam forecasting what's going to happen. He said, I wish I would be alive when your people drive you out of your, of your city or town. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was astonished. He said, Are they really going to drive me out? My people? I am the trustworthy. I am the honest. He didn't say that. But this is the indication of his question with amazement. Or, are they going to drive me out? He said, never did anyone come with what you are bringing, except that he was persecuted. People became his enemy, his own people became enemies. And then he said, if the time comes, whilst I am still alive, I will certainly, strongly support you in your mission. But very shortly after that, Waraqa ibn Nawfal died. This is the story, whilst the first one was the reason of revelation, but this is the story behind the, uh, some of the verses, and not a reason of revelation. Allah Azza wa starts the surah by saying, Iqra. Iqra. Bismi Rabbika alladhi khalaq. Recite. In the name of your Lord who created. Now, Iqra is a command. One might say, why didn't Allah Azza wa Jal immediately inform him that uh, it's only one one Allah and worship only me and why did he start with a command well uh, people of knowledge said that the the wisdom behind this is that Allah Azza wa is establishing the relationship between Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his lord at the very beginning from the first connection The first thing conveyed to him from his Lord is establishing and setting the grounds and setting the rule. I am your Lord, so I command. And you're my slave, so you abide. I say recite, you recite. Now the Prophet ﷺ, as we said, 
as he said, ma ana biqari. Allah knew that. It is a message to say, when the command of Allah comes, you don't object. You abide. Do your best to fulfill. If you're unable, then you're excused. The other thing is, by commanding him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to recite, knowing that he does not know how, is telling people that this is not an exclusive message to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because we're telling him to recite knowing that he doesn't know how. It is a message to be conveyed beyond him to humanity. Uh, number three is that reciting is something that requires knowledge. Right? So Allah Azza wa is saying, learn. So you'll know your, your Lord, you know what He wants of you, and you know His commandments, and therefore you will recognize His uh, glory and lofty rank, and you will know His religion, and therefore adhere to it the way He wants from you, right? Just like Allah Azza wa said to Muhammad وسلم, in a different verse, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know, obtain that knowledge. Knowledge of what? That there is la ilaha illallah. None is worthy of worship except Allah. So this requires knowledge. So Allah Azza wa Jal, again, another message is to learn. Because the only way to act or to talk is by learning. Imam al-Bukhari in, in his Sahih, said a chapter entitled Al-Ilmu Qabla Al-Qawli Wal-Amal Knowledge precedes talking or action or, or and action because you cannot talk how can you talk about anything not having information and data about it how can you do something not knowing how to do it you require knowledge in both cases in order to do or say. So this is uh, another message. Now, in the very first connection, the first step in the path of the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah azza wa jal commanded Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite, but he connected the recitation with something. Recite in the name of your Lord. Telling him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that make everything you do in the name of your Lord. Everything you say in the name of your Lord. Everything you say or do for your Lord. The way your Lord wants. Bismi rabbika. It has to be that. It is a rule by which one needs to live his life to make everything in the name of Allah for the sake of Allah as Allah Azza wa Jal wants and wills. And then, الَّذِي خلق. Your Lord who has created. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling him to start by the name of his Lord, and then spoke about one of his qualities, creation, to say that he is capable of creation. We will conclude this session. Subhanakallahumhamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu alaykum.